Welcome back to another episode of the Girls Talk Money podcast. We're both big believers that your mindset is key in having the financial life you want. So today we're diving into all things money mindset, sharing some of our best tips. Erin, do you want to kick us off? Yes, I think the first tip to get us started here is the idea that money is an exchange of energy. And I feel like this is a concept that like is kind of new to me. Grace, I know like you have done a lot of work in kind of like learning about spirituality and you even did a mindset course, um, I think last year you said, Mm -hmm. but I think that's a really good like kind of overarching topic to get us started in this conversation is just the idea that money is an exchange of energy. And the way that I like to think about this is money is a neutral resource. I think a lot of times, depending on like where you're at with your money journey, you can get this attachment to money or you can get this attachment to the money that you feel like you don't currently have. You're attached to the thought of having more money in the future. But just like remembering that it is a neutral resource and as an exchange of energy, money's flowing in and money is flowing out constantly. So just the idea of letting money flow in, but then also not being afraid to let money flow out. Going along with that too, one thing I always say and that I learned in that course is that money is everywhere because money is simply an exchange of energy. It's quite literally all around you. Like looking at my surroundings, right? Because everything you buy or you spend money on or whatever is you're doing that because you feel like you are getting equal or greater value from that thing that you are giving cash over for. So like when, you know, the chair that I'm sitting on, I spend like $200 for because I felt that it was worth $200 and that by handing over my $200 cash, I'm getting $200 of value back. And so with that in mind, it's like money is everywhere. You look around you, the chair that you're sitting on or the car that you're driving, or even just like when you're driving and you drive by a house, like the house next to you is worth $500,000. That's a whole bunch of money right there. Cars drive by you. That's money that's just like driving by you basically. So a lot of times when people are in this mindset that like money is scarce, I'm always like, well, money's actually, it's everywhere. Like it's literally all around you at all times, um, which I feel like helps keep in the mindset that it's like a neutral resource because you don't look at like a car that drives by you and be like, oh, that's bad or that's good or that's bad money or good money or even just like the roads you drive on like that's tax dollars that are doing that right but you're not like associating that you're not thinking of that as bad or good um but kind of like going off of that one of my money mindset tips that I give to everyone after I took the course I did last year is that to really transform your money mindset, you have to understand the beliefs that you hold about money in your subconscious brain. Because in your brain, you have the subconscious and the conscious. The conscious is like your rational thinking in the moment, your short-term memory. And so you, those are like your conscious desires. You're like, in this moment, I want like this or whatever. And your subconscious brain is where your beliefs are stored. And that makes up 90% of your brain as where your conscious is only 10%. So if your subconscious beliefs that make up 90% of your brain don't match what you consciously desire, it's going to be really hard to have those things because this is a little neuroscience lesson, our brains are designed to keep us safe, right? Like, you know, when you go to cross the road or something, cross the street and something in your brain tells you like, no, look back this way again. Like even if you've already looked left and right, it tells you to look the other way again. That's because your brain's trying to keep you safe and protected. Or when we get defensive about something, it's because our brains are like, whoa, like that just challenged my belief and I want to feel safe. So if you have a belief that like money is bad, right? Or people who have money are bad or having too much money, quote unquote, too much money is bad, but you're consciously saying, I want to make more or I want more money. It's going to be really hard to bring that into your actual physical life because your brain is actively looking for ways to keep you safe and therefore actively looking for ways to not get too much money or to not have more money because again, you have this belief that having too much is bad. And that goes for a lot of different money beliefs. Um, but I see the one of like, oh, money is bad. Because I think a lot of times too, when people grow up, if maybe your parents didn't have a lot of money, um, 
sometimes they look at people who have a bigger house or more money or they go on more vacations and they're like, they must be in debt or they must not do this or they must have, you know, finessed their way into a job or that makes more or, you know what I mean? Like they start to assume these bad intentions. So sometimes that can create a subconscious belief that money is bad or whatever, but you have to align in order to have what you really want in your actual life. You have to be able to figure out what those subconscious beliefs are and work to rewire them. That's such a good point. I heard the analogy that money is like breath work or breathing because Mm -hmm. you're breathing in you're breathing in the CO2 and you're breathing, or no, you're breathing in oxygen and you're breathing out <laughs> CO2. I'm like, what are we and breathing? You, <laughs> and you would never think like, oh, I'm breathing in too much oxygen. I'm like mm-hmm. hogging all of the oxygen because there's more than enough to go around. It's an abundant mm-hmm. resource, um, but you can't only breathe in the oxygen. At some point, you have to breathe out the CO2. And that's just kind of like the natural flow of if you have that attachment to money and you're bringing it in, but you're not okay with letting it go um, and spending it and kind of like getting into that rhythm, then like you're not going to continue that flow um, Mm -hmm. of energy. But moving on to the next tip, the one that I have here is we're given the level of abundance that we're prepared for. And I really, really love this one. It's just kind of the idea that if you aren't prepared yet to move up the ladder then you're not going to. And this can look like so many different things depending on where you're at in your money journey or what goals you're trying to set. But the way that I like to think about it is when I was just starting my money journey, I was in college and I was not making that much money, but I was really taking the approach that I was going to learn about money and I was going to get my financial shit together before I started making a lot of money. I think a lot of people sort of think about money in the sense that, you know, I'll start saving and I'll start investing when I make more money, or I will learn how to invest when I make more money. I'll go talk to a financial advisor when I make more money. But if you're not prepared for that money to flow in, then it's not going to flow in because you're not prepared for that abundance. I heard um, a tip one time that was like, think about it as if you hit the lottery tomorrow and all of a sudden you had $10 million. Do you, are you prepared for that $10 million to physically flow into your money system? Do you have the appropriate account set up? Is your password secure in your bank account so that no one steals your $10 million? Just things like that. Think about it as am I prepared for more money or is there still work that I need to do at this current rung of the ladder before I can move up? My friend who is a spiritual coach always says, if your desires showed up in this exact moment, would you be ready for them? Like, would you be prepared? And that goes for things outside of money too. Like if your dream relationship showed up right now, are you at a place emotionally and like with your confidence and like with your boundaries and everything, are you at a place to actually keep and maintain that relationship? Um, And it's very insightful when you think back to like, you know, even like, for example, I wanted my own apartment last year, but this time last year I was in one of the worst places ever with my health. Like I was just starting to go to the doctor that helped me figure it all out. If I had gotten like my dream apartment at that point, I probably would have just been unhappy there because I was so in so much pain, right? Like I, it's, it was going to be hard to like actually keep up with everything because I was in so much pain all the time. So like, you know, you really have to think like, if, am I in a place to actually keep and like maintain the desires that I want? Um, but you mentioned like it being a ladder. And one thing I want to know about, it's more of like a neuroscience thing rather than necessarily a mindset tip, but it's really helpful when you think about framing your goals is this thing in, like manifestation and in just like in neuroscience called the ladder of believability where basically you're in order for something to like you know manifest into your reality your brain has to be able to wrap itself around that and to really make sense of the goal and your subconscious brain again which makes up 90 percent of your brain does not know the difference between what's real and what's not and it doesn't know the difference between the present and like the future so when you're thinking about manifesting the next thing say you made like 50k this year if you're like my goal for next year is to make 500k your brain's probably going to be like what because it's not going to make sense of it um it 
it's not that that's like so far-fetched and that you can never have that, but it's like, think of it as more of like a step up the ladder. So if you're like, okay, I made 50K this year, next year I want to make 100K. Your brain's going to be able to wrap itself around that more. Um, and that's going to help with bringing it into your reality. And then you start to practice affirmations and things around it and visualizations around that goal, talking about it as if it's in the present. Like, I'm so glad that I make 100K. 100K allows me to do all these things, yada, yada, whatever. And that helps your brain kind of wrap itself around it. But you have to have this ladder and going up the rung. And I think sometimes a lot of people feel like they have to jump so far ahead, which is normal, right? We all want like big things or whatever but having it as a ladder really helps um the other my next mindset tip on the list which i just did a video about this and i feel like we were just talking about this in another episode that we filmed too but one like mindset tip that i tell people is to focus on solutions rather than the problems because sometimes our brains if we're in this mindset of like scarcity, our brains can kind of blow things out of proportion where we're like, oh my gosh, this problem is like, I keep coming up on this problem. It's really frustrating me. And then it kind of just becomes like bigger and bigger and bigger in our brains as we focus on the problem. So instead focus on the solutions like, okay, this is the problem. What can I actually do about it? Is it even in my control at all? Because some things are not in our control, right? Like in the financial world, for example, in February, I had, I knew I had to bring my car in to get something fixed. It was going to cost a thousand dollars while they were in looking at it. They said that I needed all of my brakes replaced because they were literally, there was like less than a millimeter left on them. Like they were, it was bad. Um, yeah, it was bad. Um, and this was like a trusted, uh, like mechanic that I see. This wasn't someone trying to rip me off or whatever. So it ended up costing pretty much double what I was expecting to pay. That's an unexpected expense. It came out of my emergency fund. There's nothing in that moment that I can do about that. It frustrates me, but there's no solution other than just paying the bill and moving on um, and continuing to keep up with my car. But if there are problems like I keep going over budget every month, it's like, okay, well, if you're continuing to just look at the problem and never look for solutions, that's actually an active form of self-sabotage where you're continuing to put yourself in the situation of frustration because you're not actually looking for a way to solve that problem and then give yourself relief. So if you're finding that you are always coming up on problems. Shift your mindset from focusing so much on the problem to taking action on the solutions and looking for creative ways to solve it. I love that tip so much. And we talk about this all the time in relation to your budget and how you spend money because so many people talk about like, oh, I can't save money because I the economy is bad and I like don't make enough compared to how expensive things are. And it's like, yes, that's the problem. And that is a problem. That's a completely valid problem. But you can kind of think of it as wasted time by focusing on that problem instead of focusing on finding a solution for that. Our best performing podcast episode to date was the episode that we did on how to build an effective budget when everything's expensive AF. And we broke down all of the root causes into why you're feeling like you don't have any money left over to save and invest at the end of the month, finding the root cause between a needs problem, a wants problem, or an income problem. And I think that episode was so high performing because of the fact that it focused on three viable solutions for the problem that so many people are facing. Because at the end of the day, that's all you can do is focus on your options for your solution that's going to put the control back into your, your hands because you saying that the economy is bad and that's why you can't save is not going to change your situation. You have to be the one to like look for those root causes and find a solution on your own. So love that tip. The next one on my list is get clear on what is spending and what's an investment. Um, and I think that this is such a good topic for really anyone that's looking to kind of like up level their life because we think about investments just in terms of like, oh, I'm going to go invest in the stock market. And like, obviously, those are good investments that we all partake on. We're trying to build wealth here. However, I heard a quote one time that said, any money you invest into yourself, you should expect a 10x multiple because that's the only investment that can't be taxed. And it just comes back to the idea of like really getting clear on, again, what is spending money versus what is 
investing money, even if that means investing in yourself. We just filmed a podcast episode on the best investments we've made. And that episode was so great because we talked a lot about different investments outside of just like typical stock market investments or anything like that in terms of investing in ourselves in courses, mentors, retreats, things like that, that are really going to help you up level your life and probably make you a lot more money because of that up leveling. We've also both talked about how we feel like rent can be an investment because especially as both of us being entrepreneurs and having a podcast, I know we both went with two bedroom apartments, although those are objectively probably going to be more expensive than getting a one bedroom but because we have the space to just like focus we like I personally feel like my apartment yes it's quote-unquote expensive my apartment is not expensive for Massachusetts like my apartment is actually on the cheaper end in Massachusetts but I feel like every time I share my rent people are like what the heck because I pay 2400 for a two-bedroom um which yeah if you compare that to like rural Nebraska obviously I'm paying a ton of money but um I don't feel like I'm paying that much but it is more than what I was paying. I wasn't paying anything when I lived at my parents' house, right? And it's more than what I would be paying for maybe a studio or one bedroom in the suburbs. But I feel like that's an investment in myself and my business because having the space to create and film and things like that, it, it like it's benefiting me and my business. Like the energy that I have here is just so different. Um, I talk about it too when it comes to investing in your confidence and like, like I get lip filler done, very transparent about it on social media. It makes me feel more confident. And I feel like that's genuinely a good investment because I show up confidently or investing in clothes that I actually like wearing and feel confident in so that I'm not showing up to these work events and stuff feeling insecure. But I love that kind of shift of thinking of things as an investment um, and thinking about if you are really getting an ROI on it rather than just like spending for the sake of spending. Um, kind of similar to what I was saying before, but slightly different and just something I always keep in mind. And I want to say when I mentioned like looking for solutions and with this like next like quote slash mindset shift that I'm going to share, I, in the past, like me a few years ago, I was always very focused on the problems. I had a hard time shifting and focusing on solutions. I was so stressed and overwhelmed with my life because I was working literally like 60 to 70 hours a week that I was so much more, I don't want to say reactionary because I've never been someone that like lashes out or whatever, but things would bother me a lot more. And I would kind of like sit with, that. even just like being in traffic, I would get so impatient and it would like frustrate me so much as we're now, I'm just like, well, <laughs> guess I wasn't meant to get there, you know, on time or like, what? like I just am so like, whatever. I'm just very much a don't cry over spilled milk person now, but I'm not saying this to point the finger at anybody because I can point it right back at myself because I'm saying like, I used to be this way. But one thing that was like a good mindset shift for me, and this is a quote that my brother actually loves, and he's the one who initially shared it with me years and years ago, but it's like, Mistakes are inevitable, but life is far more about how you handle things. And the quote says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you how you react to it. And I love that when it comes to everything, but especially money, because as you're learning, there's going to be things that you look back, you're like, oh, I could have done that better. Or, you know, you sit there and you track your spending, you're like, oh my gosh, I spent a lot at dinner this week. Like, holy crap. Or, you know, like oh, I bought this clothing piece and I spent a lot of money on it. And now I am like, you know, this, I don't even love this piece. Like, why did I spend the money on it? And like, those things are going to happen. They're inevitable, but don't make life 90 or t don't make life like so focused on what happened, make life more focused on how you choose to react to things. Because I truly believe that how you react to things is a choice. And if you genuinely work on it, and I say this again, as someone who I've had to work on like my patience, um, and because I used to get so frustrated at things. And then I was like, I don't want to be that kind of person. And then obviously working on my stress helped a lot, but and like slowing down the pace of my life. But now like some bizarre things will happen and I'll be like, all right, okay like whatever you know what I mean or like, I'm just like okay um which is actually like a tip to just like a sidetrack tip is that when things like happen to you quite literally start just like verbalizing like random things or things that frustrate you just start literally going okay we're like all right 
it just literally start saying that. I, that's what I started doing about two years ago, I would say, and it's helped me immensely. Like if I spill something literally all over the floor, I'll be like, oh, okay, um, paper towels, here we go. You know, like I'm just, <laughs> but I always am like, okay. Um, and it just like tells your brain basically that it's not that big of a deal because when it's already happened, what can you, you can't really go back and reverse it. You know, most things are not reversible um, in terms of like, you know, oh, yeah. you bought something. You could probably go return it, but like, you get what I'm saying. But um, yeah, focusing way more about how you react to things and how you choose to move forward, way more important with, than like what has already happened. 100%. This is like kind of random, but it reminded me, I saw a TikTok video yesterday of this girl. I wish I knew her name. If I can find it, well, I, I follow her. So I'll find her TikTok account and we'll link it in the show notes. But she's the girl that she has like the neon green hat in all of her videos. And she is the one that like talks all the time about how she's in like a shit ton of credit card debt and like how she's getting out of it and everything. And I saw her video yesterday that was saying how she got laid off from her job, which is like so sad because she's like trying to pay off all of her credit card debt. But then I like <laughs> went to her profile and she made a follow up video responding to a comment where someone said, okay, but this is great for the TikTok plot. And she like made a video being like, I'm honestly like, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Like she was like, she's like, I can't do anything about the fact that I lost my job, but like at least I yeah. got some good TikTok content out of it. But I, I like that mindset of just being like, yeah. okay, like life happens, things are going to be thrown at you, and mm -hmm. how you react to it is what is yeah. going to like matter moving forward, and how you related it to tracking your spending. Mm -hmm. This is something that I talk about all the time because when I first started tracking my spending. I would track for half the month and then as soon as I mm -hmm. went over my budget, I would stop tracking and be like, fuck it. I am not going to track anymore. I'm not going to try to stick to my budget because I already went over my budget. But now I'm like super diligent about even if I'm over my budget, I'm still going to track it because at the end of the day, how I react to seeing those numbers is what is going to determine my spending habits for the next week. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I yeah. had a big spend week and instead of choosing to just ignore my finances I'm still sitting down on Monday I'm still tracking all of those purchases so that the next weekend I'm like okay I do I, I am over budget I should cut back this weekend mm -hmm. and genuinely my life has gotten exponentially better ever since I started focusing on how I react and focusing on solutions and also I will say this also goes for figuring things out when you don't know or like acknowledging when you don't know the answer and actually looking to find the answer. Like for example, for years, I didn't know how to invest and it made me nervous. And I sat there and I did literally nothing about it. And then when I went to graduate college, I was like, this is silly. Like what I'm choosing, I'm actively choosing to sit in this place of not knowing, knowing that that is not helping my financial future. So then I sat down and I figured it out. Um, or when it comes to budgeting, like I know budgeting apps worked for me and I just felt like they all, like, I just didn't love ma like managing my money on my phone. So what I do, I just built my own budget template. Obviously you can like buy one, but I just like wanted to build my own, but like, you know what I mean? Trying to actually find solutions when maybe you don't like when, you, when you're sitting in a place of not knowing, right? There's a lot that you're like, oh, I want to buy a house, but I don't know about the home buying process. So I choose to do nothing about it. Like, no, go and find the answer and figure it out so that you can have what you want. Yeah. And that relates to ignoring things that you know are stressing you out as well. Like back mm -hmm. to the budgeting topic like you ignoring your finances because you're afraid of what the numbers are going to say is only making your stress 10 times worse and that's trickling mm -hmm. into other aspects of your life I think about this with taxes I yeah. literally hate taxes so much and the entire tax process stresses me out so much so my CPA just filed an extension for me so now my taxes for last year are due in September but like the fact that I'm waiting until September, it's literally just like in the back of my brain mm -hmm. all day, every day that I need to do my taxes. And like I, by the end of this month, I need to sit down and just like get them out of the way so that I'm not spending the next couple of months just stressed about them. So there's so many like applicable areas that that can apply to. But the next money mindset kind of like tip or just like thing to remember is that those who care the least always win. And I like think about this in a lot of different aspects of my life, but how it relates to money is just kind of the idea that to be so frank, money flows to those who need it the least. Um, and it's all about the like sort of 
needy attachment style with money. To give you an example, if you are trying to start your business and you want to get like your first couple of deals or whatever, and someone comes to you and they ask you what your rate is, if you really need those deals to go through because you're just starting your business and you really need the money, you're probably going to be afraid to tell them your actual rate and you're much more likely to lowball yourself for that rate. So let's say you are freelancing, you're doing like UGC videos or whatever, because this is how I was when I was first starting to do UGC two years ago. Um, if someone told me what, what my rate was, even though I know that a average rate is maybe $150, I'm probably going to tell them like $75 because I really want that deal to go through and I really need that money. However, this leads you to being under or underpaid, overworked, and you're more likely to lead to burnout because you were afraid to tell them your actual rate in an effort to get the money that you feel like you need. So it's just a good reminder that those who care the least always win in any type of deal. And the less you care, the more leverage you have, and the better off you'll be. Um, that's kind of like, it's just something to remember because Obviously, you can kind of be sitting here being like, okay, but like I do need the money. I'm not in a place where I like have all of the leverage. I'm just not. But I think like one way to kind of get around that is just remembering that you don't need everything right now. Even if you have really big goals, those goals don't need to be accomplished right now. And you can kind of just like practice a little bit of gratitude for the things that you do have so that you can remove that almost like needy attachment style to the money that you know you want in the future, but you don't have like right in this very moment. I think this goes back to two things is one is like the scarcity versus abundance mindset. If you're in the energy of like, I need this, I need it, I need it, I need it. You're in an energy of scarcity where that need of like, oh my gosh, I need to have this can come from a place of, I need it now because I'm never going to have it again. Or I need it now because I'm never going to have enough, um, which is in a scarcity mindset versus people who are in an abundance mindset always trust that the money is going to flow to them. So that's why they're not in that needing energy or they quote unquote like don't care because they just trust that it's going to flow back to them. And I will say like the scarcity versus abundance mindset thing is something that you continuously have to work on. Um, if you're looking for like a good way to work on it, I would, I literally am a walking ad for this book. I love it so much. I literally tell everyone to read it. It's called Rich as Fuck by Amanda Francis. It is so good. I've read it twice now. First time I read it, I feel like it just totally transformed my money mindset. Like it was so good. And I go back to it when I feel like I'm maybe struggling a little bit with scarcity mindset and feeling like there's not enough or whatever. Um, but going back to that is so important and having a good idea of the scarcity versus abundance thing and trying to stay in the state of abundance is really helpful. And the second thing is we were talking about kind of that like needy energy. The way that I learned about it is that think of it like a child when a child is like, you know, like they're like, Grace, 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 Grace. I I, I need this. I need it. I need it. And they're like annoying. The, you're like, please, you know, you're like, give me a second. Like I will get to you. I will give you your juice box to me. But like you like asking me a million times is actually really pissing me off, you know? Like, and so that's kind of what they say about the energy of needing versus wanting when it comes to the, like, whether you're asking, like whether you're religious and maybe you're asking a God that you believe in, or if you're more spiritual and you're like speaking more to the universe, it isn't that God or the universe is annoyed with you, right? But it's being in that needy energy is not a good energy energy to be in versus having that abundance mindset of like, I trust that the money is going to come to me and I trust that it's going to come to me at the right time, in the right amount, like in the way, either the way that I want it or in a better way than I expected. That's a better energy to be in. Um, but my next mindset tip on my list, and this might be my like last one on my list, but this is something that I actually learned in therapy. And I, it's one of the most helpful things I've learned. I think it's so practical for so many life things, but especially when it comes to money. Um, so it's when you're struggling with your money mindset, specifically when you're struggling with doubt or fear, ask yourself for evidence. So this actually is like two tips in this one that I have here. I cheated, but basically ask yourself for evidence. So if you're like, I am running out of money, I'm never going to have enough. 
ask yourself if there's actually evidence behind that. Because for example, I have a fully funded emergency fund, but sometimes I'll be like, oh my gosh, like if something were to happen, like, I don't know how I'm going to like figure this out. Like, I'm gonna, and then I'm like, I look for evidence. I'm like, okay, no, actually we have a fully fun- funded emergency <laughs> fund. Um, we have stable clientele. Like most of my clients I've been working with for over a year. What are the odds that all of them are going to leave me tomorrow? Right? Like it's probably, you know, it's probably slim. There's also evidence that I have lots of skills. If something catastrophic were to happen, I could go get a job at a lot of different places. I could pick up a job at the coffee shop or at a restaurant. Like, you know what I mean? There's actually not a lot of evidence supporting the fact that my entire life is going to go to zero, (laughs) you know, at the drop of a hat, right? Um, Or like, if you're like, oh, I'm so bad with money. What, is there actually evidence that supports that, right? Historically, have you made countless mistakes with money? Or is your brain just blowing up Maybe you had like one month where you were off budget or something and your brain is blowing that out of proportion. If it is the former where there is actually evidence, then go into that mindset of looking for solutions. Because again, you continuing to sit there and find problems but not look for solutions is an active form of self-sabotage. So ask yourself for evidence. And then the other piece to this is run through the best, worst, and most likely case scenario. Because for example, you can use this with anything. But for example, let's say you want to, you're really nervous about changing jobs and this new job, it, you're really excited about it and it's going to pay you more money, but you're, you're really afraid that, you know, you like your job, you like your work environment, but you want to make more money. So you're like, okay, do I stay in the job I have, or do I accept this one that is going to help me get to my financial goals? But I have this fear that maybe the work environment or my colleagues, I won't like as much go through the best, worst, and most likely case scenario best case scenario is you absolutely love the job. It pays you so well. Your colleagues are great. You love your life, whatever. It improves the quality of your life. Absolute worst case scenario is you get the job, you hate your colleagues, and you start to look for another job as a solution. Or maybe you try to go back to the job that you have now. Most likely case scenario is usually somewhere in between. Maybe you love the job. It pays you more. Maybe some of your colleagues are great and some maybe you don't like as much, but like you figure it out, you distance yourself from the ones you don't like as much, you hang out with the ones you do like. When you go through and you list out the best, worst, and most likely case scenario, it helps you identify where your brain is blowing something completely out of proportion because again, our brains are trying to keep us safe. So our brains are actively trying to avoid that worst case scenario, but what happens is then our brains focus on that worst case scenario because it's so focused on trying to avoid it that we tend to not even think through the best case scenario or the most likely case scenario. And I love doing this with a lot of life decisions, like when it comes to moving or when it comes to money or relationships or friendship or anything, you can apply this kind of framework to thinking through your options. But I love it, especially when it comes to money. Like if I, okay, I'm worried about you know, I want to do a lump sum, a giant lump sum payment on my debt with my leftover tax money, but I'm worried a minute that's not going to be the right decision. What's the best case scenario, most likely and worst case scenario? And how would I actually work through all of those? Um, I find it so, so helpful because it's so tangible too. You can actually write down and think through the potential, which is really helpful. I love that tip so much. This is something that I honestly feel like I've gotten really good at over the last couple of years and that goes into my Mm -hmm. my next tip and the last one on my list as well so we can kind of get to that one but this is something that I do so frequently especially when I was making the decision to quit my corporate job last year to pursue kind of being self-employed and I went through my options and I realized that my worst case scenario was having to go get another job that was exactly like the job that I was currently doing so my worst Mm -hmm. case scenario was ending up right back in the same position. And yes, like obviously there was a chance that it took me a really long time to find a job and Mm -hmm. I had no money for those that time. So I had to like go into my emergency fund and things like that. But basically my worst case scenario was having to go get another job that I was already currently in. And once I thought about it like that, I was like, I'm doing myself a disservice by not taking that risk and taking that bet on myself. And that Mm -hmm. goes into my last tip that Indecision and an inability to take action does nothing but keeps you exactly where you are. Um, I heard a quote one time that said, like, poverty loves indecision. And I don't like love the phrasing there, but it kind of just goes into the point that if you struggle with making a decision because you feel like you 
don't have all of the answers, you feel like you don't have enough information, you're never going to feel like you know all of the answers or have enough information to make that decision and staying and refusing to take action is doing nothing but keeping you where you are. Um, And I think like this is super applicable in the money sense because trying a lot of different things in order to like increase your income and make money has literally never been easier. Um, It doesn't really cost much money to start a lot of different types of businesses nowadays. So you do have kind of like a unique opportunity to try a lot of different things, give yourself an actual fair shot of increasing your income outside of your full-time job. And the only thing that you could quote unquote waste is your time, not really your money. Um, And even like the whole waste of time thing, I never believe that to be true because I totally believe that everything that you try is going to teach you so much and give you so many lessons that you can then take to the next thing that you try. But the worst thing that you can do is to do nothing. And the time's going to tick regardless. There's this expression or quote that's basically like, a lot of people, it comes up a lot when people say they want to go back to school and people, and they're, they're hesitant. They're like, oh, I don't want to go back to school in my thirties or in my late twenties. That's so much later than everybody else. And people are like, you're going to be 40 someday regardless. So would you rather be 40 with a degree or without a degree? Or would you rather be 40 with, you know, your money figured out or without your money figured out? Or would you rather be 40 and have tried multiple side hustles and found one that you like And then a bunch you don't like, or would you rather be 40 having tried nothing? And so it's like, I love phrasing it that way too, where it's like the time's going to tick and you're going to end up in the future, regardless of what you choose to do in the now, but doing things in the now is going to give you so much more clarity or give future you so much more clarity. So like, if you're going to end up in the same place, you know, why not actually try to do something now that can then put yourself in a better place if the time's going to tick regardless? 100% love that tip that brings us to the end of today's episode of the girls talk money podcast this was such a fun one we want to hear all of your thoughts as always in spotify if you have any other mind money mindset tips that you love or if any of these tips helped you out let us know in spotify you can also find us on instagram at girls talk money pod send us a dm there if you have any questions feedback episode ideas anything like that but thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the girls talk money podcast and until next week